Some of their work comes from experience. Some of it springs from inspiration and sometimes it just happens. This is the story of the photographers who have captured the magnificent landscapes, the light, and the people in them throughout Arizona for well over a century. They've hiked the wilderness, camped out alone, and worked in extremes of climate and the weather to bring us a photographic, natural, and human history of our beloved state and illustrated the fascinating chronicle of our ever-changing landscape of Arizona life. This presentation is dedicated to them, the photographers. Hello, I'm Carrick James. I'm a photographer and I shoot for Arizona Highways. I, I've always viewed photography as a quest for beauty. What better way to spend a, a day or a week or your life, right? That's the way it's been. You want to put yourself in the right place at the right time. That's key to everything. Then you're on. You're reacting to it all. I do a lot of adventure travel photography, uh, canyoneering for Arizona highways, a lot of river rafting in the Grand Canyon in various places. If I can get a camera into a situation and come back with images, I'm going to try and do it. My roots in photography go back to landscape. In high school, when I got more serious about photography, I did a lot of camping and backpacking and hiking with a few friends, but really there weren't many people around and I didn't photograph the people at that time. I did the pure landscape, the grand landscape, and it was only later that I, I, I began to feel a little stilted by that, a little hemmed in. I wanted to make those landscapes come alive for me. And the way to do that was to include people that I met exploring and enjoying that environment with me or river guides or hiking uh, buddies or climbing guides. I found that uh, it sort of energized or activated the scene for me. And it also created an additional element that uh, was challenging to work with, and, and I like that degree of difficulty. Plus, you just meet some great people, you know, getting them out there with you and, and sharing it all at the same time. To work for Arizona Highways Magazine now for just about 20 years, and I've done roughly 40 stories for them, contributed to a number of others, and had 10 of their covers, worked on their books. I mean, it's been a great mix, and whenever the phone rings and it's them, I, my eyes light up. It's, it's exciting to get those calls. One of the things I've been really lucky to find and photograph in the Southwest is rainbows. And if you're in the monsoon season, you're out in the right places, you can see these cells drifting across Colorado Plateau, and you can track them, and you can be in the right places now and then. And I've done it, including racing along Interstate 40 to Petrified Forest National Park. I got uh, four or five minutes of brilliant light, and I was just singing to the light. It's, that's what you feel like. It just is overwhelming. Yeah, along Route 66 from Chicago to California, there are literally probably hundreds of towns that once were thriving and then have either disappeared or, uh, or just barely hanging on. Some are true ghost towns, actually. It's really like time travel. When you get off the main highway and get back there, uh, you're dropping back decades. We did a day trip down the canyon, uh, starting from the base of Hoover Dam. Besides the, the hot water waterfalls, the hot springs, the slot canyons, the desert bighorn sheep, all those things, we found this miraculous little, what is reminiscent of a sea cave, a Hawaiian sea cave, on the Colorado River in the Arizona desert. It's not real big. At the right time of the day, for about 30 to 40 minutes, a low late sun shines over a 300 foot wall to the west on the Nevada side, and the ang it angles down into the, the cave itself through the opening. Because the light colored lava rock has fallen from the ceiling to the bottom, and the water is really clear and cool, it's like they're like reflectors. So the light bounces up, lights that, that water, and it's like you're floating on an emerald crystal. And when it came time to caption all the images for the story, it was an unnamed spot, I mean, the cave itself, so I called it Emerald Cave, which is what we had taken to calling it in shorthand. The name actually is, seems to have stuck. I still get emails from around the world from people saying, how do I get to Emerald Cave? Shooting for the magazine has been a gift. Well, thanks for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed watching this segment of Arizona Highways, The Photographers.